Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cold Hard Truth Podcast. I'm Jack Smith. And I'm Anish Gupta. Today, we couldn't have Shrikar here, but we're going to try something new in this episode. We were trying to come up with topics, and we thought about which teams are best set up for the next five years, trying to come up with a top five. But we realized that we have a big argument at number one. So this episode is going to be completely focused on which team is best set up for the future. We have the Ravens and the Chiefs. I think it's the Ravens, and I don't see an argument for the Chiefs. And each you think it's the Chiefs? Look, dude, it's – okay, the fact that you didn't even say it's an, it's not even an argument just shows. Like, I think it's the other way around. I don't even think it's remotely close. Like, you want me to start off and kind of give you something why? Yeah, I think it's a little ironic that you're wearing Ravens colors and I'm wearing – Yeah, I know. Uh, it's, trust me, no, this is not you... a Ravens shirt. I hate the Ravens, but that being said, I'm not biased at all here. Um, look, the Chiefs are just – okay. The one thing, one thing I think you got to give the Chiefs is I think they have a better three. Right. Uh, I think we can all agree that the Ravens and Chiefs both have a good quarterback, both have a good coach, and they both have good offensive line. That being said, I think the Chiefs have a better three, uh, kind of three way combo. Uh, their offensive line, I, I mean, oh, Ravens no. just lost. No, 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 no. Ravens' offensive line is much better. They just lost Marshall Yonda. Uh, that's that's a pretty have, big. They still have arguably the best tackle duo in the league. I'd say about the. Same. No, no, that's their tackle duo is not bad. Uh, I think Ramachek is uh, really Ramacek's good. Ramachek's the same. Sorry, who's the guy? It starts uh, with an R. Ronnie, Ronnie Stanley. Stanley. Ronnie Stanley, sorry. Uh, Ramchick is a saint. Um, what I was saying is, yes, yes, I agree their tackles are good, but you still need interior, and Chiefs have pretty good tackles. Eric Fisher's been playing a lot better recently. Mitchell Schwartz is still really, really good. He's only 31. Uh, Ravens, again, just lost a key player in a Marshall Yonda, who's 36, right? He was 36 at the time. 31? Yeah, 31 is a lot better than 36. Well, I think I would give Mitchell Schwartz five years. five years. Yeah, that's five years. That's five years down the road. He's already and above 30. That 31 for a tackle is not bad. 31 for right, a tackle is not bad at all. Joe Staley five played five offense. solid years from 31 to 36. I will. I guarantee you, 31 to 36, Mitchell Schwartz will give you good years. Not only that. They can afford to have him for a certain amount of time so they can draft another tackle in his place, right? That being said, I think we can both agree that Patrick Mahomes is better than Lamar Jackson. And right now, I will say this, Patrick Mahomes out of every quarterback in the NFL is the best, and it's not close. Uh, I don't think it's close with anyone. I think Russell Wilson maybe, maybe is there, but it's like, it's not even close, dude. Patrick Mahomes has done things that I've never seen before, and I will I will be the first to tell you, I was... I was the last person to jump on this Mahomes train. I was the one who doubted him. Um, I thought he was kind of a system guy who just emerged out of Andy Reid and Alex Smith. Um, but he has proven me wrong countless times. I have, I have never, like, but I think the true test, again, was this past Super Bowl, right? De- he's, he's come back down 10 plus in three playoff games. I, I can't remember. I think against the Colts, he had the lead throughout. Patriots, I believe he was down, but then he brought them back in it. But I know this last playoff run, three games, down by 10 in all three, and he was able to come back. And I, I don't know why he puts him in, himself in that position. But all three playoff wins were extremely impressive. Think about this. You go down 24-0, right? And you score 51 points in three quarters. 51. Like, just in football, that's unheard of. That's college numbers to me. And he's playing out here like it's just like – rookie on Madden or something he's and he comes back down 10 against the Titans who I believe who I thought has a good chance right and that being said guess what it wasn't even Mahomes not only just Mahomes who came back it was the Chiefs defense who stopped Derrick Henry held him to about 69 rushing yards I think um that is the first defense who definitively stopped Derrick Henry in this whole 10 to 12 game run that the Titans were on that is the first defense that did it people had questions on them last year this year, they stepped up. They stepped up when it mattered in the Super Bowl, right? They were able to hold Jimmy G countless times, like countless third downs. They found ways to distract him or make him uh, throw the football in risky situations. Uh, and I think Tyron Matthew is here to stay. He's a great leader. I think he's a top five, borderline top five safety. Um, and think about it this way. Most of the players on the Chiefs, there's only, I believe, six or seven, if, I look, be, uh, if I'm not mistaken, six or seven who are above the age of 30. And those six or seven are all 30 or 31. Let that sing in. I think the oldest is 34, and that's Chad Henney. No one cares about Chad Henney. So, listen, the team is set up for the future, right? The only thing I will – because I'm, I'm not going to say they're a perfect team. The only thing I will give you is their salary cap does seem a little bit fudged up. I think there is some, there is some iffy stuff there. 
I believe they have around 1 million in cap space right now, but look, a quarterback, a coach and an offensive line can overcome all of that. So and I, I, mean, I agree with you on the points that you have made. I believe the chiefs are better set up for next year, but over the next five years, I do not think that they are better set up for the future than the Ravens. Because yes, you mentioned like it's the smallest thing in the world, the salary cap. I think the salary cap is the biggest thing when it comes to looking at it, at how a team is set up for the next five years. The Chiefs are already last in cap room and they still have to be set up to pay the biggest contract yeah. ever given out in NFL history. Keep in mind, Patrick Mahomes has to be paid before Lamar Jackson does a whole mm-hmm. year before, possibly I know. earlier than that. The, yeah. the Chiefs have to pay their entire offensive line mm-hmm. in the course of the next two years. They lose their yeah. entire they lose their entire interior offensive line to free agency this year. Mm-hmm. And next year, they have to pay both of their tackles at the same time they have to pay their quarterback. It's funny. I'm agreeing with all your points. I recognize it. I recognize the salary cap. I, for me, don't get me wrong. For rebuilding team, trust me, salary cap is a huge thing. I, and don't get me wrong. I would never disregard the salary cap. I think it's one of the most important things of the NFL. It's what makes the NFL a hard league to win in. It's what makes it a hard, uh, a hard game to, uh, to play. But listen. If you have a quarterback that has talented as Patrick Mahomes, I'm sorry. I just – it it overrides it, dude. Like hey, Lamar Jackson he, just won an MVP at one of the best seasons we've ever seen. But he has not won a playoff game. I have not seen him win a playoff game. That is – that is He's that is bad. Playing. That is bad. I two. have not seen him step up when it matters. Can you give me a clutch moment Lamar Jackson has had in, in any any game, including regular season? Name me a clutch moment Lamar Jackson has had. I mean, both Any game. getting to the playoffs, especially, uh, I think it was, what, two years ago, did he have to, did he beat the Browns, or he beat someone at the end of the year, I forget. Specifically. He beat the Browns, he did, he yes, did. To make, to, but it was his defense that won them the game. But he did it, I mean, he, he you say, always but say, he didn't, or again, but he didn't have an iconic moment that really made me go, wow, the only thing, I remember this, I, I actually said, uh, this was two years ago, I think, I said people were sleeping on Lamar Jackson because he went 6-1 and one as a starter right that year and I thought uh the Ravens could go far uh in that playoff uh playoff scenario I thought the Ravens and the Colts were two teams to watch out for I thought the Ravens would beat the Chargers I was wrong I was wrong on Lamar Jackson I thought Lamar Jackson was built for that moment and I was proven wrong right just like many fans were just this year and that's actually the reason why I picked the Titans I like there was a boatload of reasons why I could have went with the Ravens but the two things that made me pick the Titans were one they had momentum Right. And two, I didn't I haven't seen Lamar perform a clutch in the clutch moments. He's always been the guy to keep a lead and just extend it. I have never seen Lamar Jackson be down in a game. And look what happened the first time he was down in a game. Right. Which was in the uh, divisional round where Tannehill threw those two touchdown passes to extend the lead. He couldn't come out of it. He could not because, again, he's a running quarterback. Right. I'm not saying he's run for I. I. It's, it's really close. I don't know if he's a run-first quarterback yet. I can't really differentiate that. But he prides himself on running the football. And I'm sorry, at any NFL team, I don't care how talented you are, when you're down, running the football does not solve your problems. Yes, uh, it doesn't, right? No, I agree. So he has never played down until uh, AFC Divisional Round, whereas Patrick Mahomes has played up and kept leads. He's played down, and he's come back. I get both with him. Not only that. We, he's done it in the biggest of stages yet. And he's done it in the regular season. Can you, I don't know if you recall this, but um, this was his first year as a starter, right? Week four, I believe Patrick Mahomes was lighting up the world with the six touchdowns, four touchdowns, but prime time against the Broncos, right? He gets down. He finally gets down in a game and everyone starts. Whoa, 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 hold up. Maybe we might need to slow down on this guy. Dude goes on third and fourth throws left-handed for a first down and completes the comeback. Patrick Mahomes is just, I, he's a different guy. Like, he's just a different breed, dude. And not only that, if it doesn't matter with the salary cap, if you can get Mahomes his contract and Mahomes has clearly stated, he doesn't even want it. Now he was willing to take it, uh, take a year off and get it next year. Right. I will concede this Patrick Mahomes will get two big contracts. We'll get two very big ones. That's what uh, quarterbacks are trying to do now. For example, Deshaun Watson is trying to get a three-year deal so he can max out before he's starting. Right. right? Uh, Dak Prescott is also trying to do that. There are going to be quarterbacks who start to do that now. I think they're playing the hard, hard ball with salary cap, and they're go- there are going to be quarterbacks who will take these three- to four-year deals and say, hey, I can max out again right before I'm 30. I think Patrick Mahomes will be one of those guys. That being said, I think if they p- 
it doesn't matter if you can if you lock up Mahomes, it's just he will make your team. He makes players so much better. I think he is the number one reason why Tyreek Hill is that as good as he is. Uh, Alex Smith was there, but I didn't recognize as Tyreek Hill as a top ten receiver until Mahomes got there. Right? I think we can all agree. Um, same thing with Travis Kelsey. He only got better with uh, Patrick Mahomes. He was still great. Don't get me wrong, but he transcended his game to number one tight end levels with Patrick Mahomes. Yes. Same thing, Sammy Watkins, terrible in Buffalo, right? He was not living up to his uh, fourth overall pick. Comes to Kansas City, first game of the season, lights everyone up for like 290 yards, and then he was crucial in the Super Bowl win, right? There are just a boatload of guys that Patrick Mahomes has made better, okay? And defensively, they have gotten so much better. Their play, especially with the Honey Badger signing. They, he has made this team just a bunch of dogs who come together and are willing to make sacrifices for each other. See, I, I will, I will concede the clutch point because Patrick Mahomes a lot more clutch than Lamar Jackson, but you just got to look at it. He hasn't had to come back very many times because they've been so good at the beginning of the games and he just has to learn how to be able to do that. But he just hasn't been in the scenario That's, to, learn to do that. L- learning that is very hard. That is the hard. I think that is the hardest thing. For it's him. also hard when you, when you go 14 and two and you're barely down throughout the entire season. Exactly, but that's the thing, though. 14-2, and two, right? They rest him for three weeks. That concerned me. In the play- See, the playoffs is a whole different ballgame, right? It slows down. The pace gets tough. It's cold, hard winter snow. It's, it's, it's a whole different game than it is in the regular season. We all agree on that, right? That's true. Okay? Right? And I, I think in the playoffs, it's very, very hard to get up on a team early. Very hard. And when the Texans did that, I thought, wow game over i was i think i picked the texans over the chiefs i've clearly said that on the episode uh weeks prior i was i was dead set when they were up 24-0 i was like wow okay they did it i i was right about patrick mahomes i don't think he's the best quarterback in the nfl dude comes and just lights it up dude like i mean it's i i don't know i've never seen that ever in a playoff game i think we can all agree there and but yet when Lamar ja- Lamar Jackson has never gotten up on a team in the playoffs. I know we've only seen two games, but down to the Chargers, I think he got down 17 really quick, and he had to pry his way back through some lucky passes. I believe he like threw one on the run and it got complete. Like I don't know how he did it, but you know it's just he hasn't been able to come back. And again, it just comes down to the quarterbacks here. One, the Ravens also they're getting up there in age. Earl, they signed players that are not the youngest. Right, Calais Campbell is not going to be there for long. Neither is Earl Thomas. That's a good thing, I think. They've got him for two more years, and then they they're out of his contract, and that's a ton of space opens up. But see, that's the thing. That's the thing with a lot of their players too. With the Chiefs, they don't have a lot of old guys, but the young guys that they have, right? It's they're not looking to lock them up for that long. I think they're just keeping them there as bridge guys because there are a lot of guys that are twenty seven, twenty eight. They're and Chiefs. The Chiefs have been known to draft well. I. I, I like well, their Ravens draft have drafted better, and you, I mean, there's nothing. Yeah, you- I, I agree. Ravens definitely have drafted better, but they also Ravens have also kind of shied away from that. They've honestly been shying away from it and looking to veteran leadership. Mark Ingram specifically, Calais Campbell, Earl Thomas, Mark. I'm not Marcus P. He's not really a veteran, but right, those type of guys. They get they they were looking for veteran leadership, and they're looking to win now. I don't yes, see they consistently draft better. You, I mean, you even no, 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 I, I give they you might have had the best. Better. They might have had one of the best drafts this year. I I give you they draft better. I and to be honest, I like the Ravens front office more than the Chiefs. That being said, though, I think Andy Reid is a better coach than John Harbaugh. Um, I just think his offensive prowess is just. It's just second to none, honestly. I, I can't name a, quarter, a a coach that has better offensive potential than Andy Reid. I really can't. Um, and he finally got that ring. I that that ring for him really made me solidify, really solidified himself as a top three coach right now. Mm-hmm. And the, again, the Chiefs defense. It's they. I can't even put the defensive coordinator's name in my head right now. But just the guys that they have. It's just such a good um, mix of veteran leadership at the same time as young guys right i know they lost kendall fuller i think that was that was a very underrated can loss you name it can you name a chief's cornerback right now or ej two? Gaines. i have no clue i think ej Gaines. but see that's that and that's the craziest thing the chiefs don't even need the these talented guys all over the field because they have patrick mahomes and i know i'm banking on a quarterback here and i i kind of hate to be that be that guy but look 
if I and one thing we haven't mentioned yet is AFC North is a lot tougher than the AFC at West. Uh, it's, but, 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 I mean, you are a huge believer in the Broncos, right? Yeah, I am. I mean, they that's one team. Right that's one team. I, and I like the Chargers too, but they're nowhere near the AFC North. The, the AFC North has bitter and harsh rivalries that, that cannot compare with the AFC West. It's not even close. And they always, in the AFC North, look, as a fan of a team in there, they always play well each other. Each team always plays well against each other. They're always close. It could be the 0-16 Browns and uh, the 9-7 and Ravens, and it would still go down the wire like we've seen before. But that being said, the Ravens division is getting better far faster than the AFC West is. I think I think the AFC North has all four teams that can, that can be playoff contenders in two years. And we're saying best team setup for the future. Look, can you definitively say the Ravens will go 14-2 again? No, but I think that they will be a 10-win team for yeah. years to come. Okay, but look, they this is very this is a very good example of hunters versus hunted, right? The Chiefs were already here. They were already here as contenders and they were no question the uh, favorite in the AFC and every team was going after them. That being said, they still went 12 and 4 and they still secured the second seed in uh the a- AFC. The Ravens, on the other hand, were projected to be the third best team in the AFC North. And they were, I had them going eight and eight. A lot of people had them going eight and eight, maybe even nine and seven. They burst onto the scene and win 12 straight. Like it was nothing. And everyone was like, wow, okay, they're really here. Next year now, everyone's going after them. But and everyone's like a lot more. The Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Huh? It's the same thing. No, no, I, I know. But like I said, the Chiefs have shown they can handle the pressure of being the hunted. And have we the Ravens shown that happens with the Ravens this year. And I think they will. I, I, I've, I've agreed with all of your points so far, but I think it's now time to go to that little tiny thing that you mentioned at the end, which is the salary cap in which the chiefs are far more screwed than the Ravens. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ravens have 19 million cap space. I know. And, I know and the Ravens are better suited. Just, so the chiefs have the least amount of cap space in the league. And after this year, they will have to pay their entire interior offensive lineman. I, we, have I've pay. conceded all your points. I know yeah, their no, salary wanna, cap situation wanna, is not that. Let, let me go through it all, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So not only do they have to pay their entire interior offensive lineman, they have to pay Chris Jones, who we mm-hmm. talked about, and you guys say is maybe the second best defensive tackle behind Aaron Donald. They also have to pay a – Good amount of their secondary, which includes most of their corners. Yes, they're really nobodies, but they have to pay them. And next year, you come to the best quarterback in the NFL. Both Mm -hmm. Tyron Matthew, who you just said is a top five safety, and Travis Kelsey, who's a top two Mm -hmm. tight Mm -hmm. end. Right now, they have the worst salary cap in the NFL. Tell me how they're going to get through that and retain. Like, yes, okay, they're going to have Patrick Mahomes, but great. What happens when they have to let it – a Travis Kelsey walk, or they lose the left tackle, or maybe Tyron Matthew doesn't return. What happens then? So look, again, I, I can see that. I agree their salary cap situation is not the best. But that being it's said, the Patriots... The biggest deal when saying which team will be best in five years. The salary cap is the most important thing. It's a very important thing. I'm not, I'm not disregarding it. I, I didn't mean to, for it to be like a side thing. Look, the Patriots have also... I think when we compare these things, we have to look at what the New England Patriots have done. They've been the model of consistency, and they've been doing it for so long. Look, the Patriots have had their own salary cap issues. They have had to let go of star players. They have had to do that. They have let go of Gerard Mayo in his prime. They have let go of Chandler Jones in his prime. They have let go of countless players, Jamie Collins. They have done this consistently, right? They have done this all the time. They've let go of pure offensive linemen who were talented. Nate Soldier was good for them. They let him go, right? And it's proved that they can do that. Huh? Have the Chiefs proved that they can do that? That's the thing, though. I think they will be able to because here's the thing, right? They had to let go of some pieces last year, right? Not not as much as they will have to in the coming years, but they have had to let go of uh, players that I thought would stay, right? Um, but that being said, yes, they had um, they had the cap space to endure Tyron Matthew and other players that they took last year. But again. It's the quarterback play. Look, I think Patrick Mah- – it depends on if Patrick Mahomes would be willing to take a pay cut. And I think he might take a slight one because I know – I think he knows he can get another contract by 30, right? That's one thing. Second, even if they let go of some players, again, the quarterback play and the coach and the offensive line, right. it's enough, dude. It's enough to get line, over. Which they have to re-sign within the span of two years. Both they can re- one year. Look, one, they're developing new guys. They have a good rotation Two. in the interior. Two. 
I think Mitch Morse was a good leader for them. I don't think he's there anymore. But I know he. Which, they've which had, young again, guys are they developing? Huh? Which young guys are they developing? You just mentioned it. I'm saying through the draft they can develop young guys in the coming years. Mm-hmm. Not right now. I can't give you right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Like what? Like Mike Brown? Like I have no. I I cannot give you. I cannot give you backup offensive line for the Chiefs that I think can be started. I will give exactly. you that. So but I'm so saying don't her developing new guys along the. Offensive I'm saying line through the draft they can develop new they guys. Can. If they, they can. You assume yeah. they can. Yeah, and I trust awesome. them to do that. I trust them. And I, like I said, I don't need their offensive line to be where it is right now. I really don't. I, I don't need it. I, we've seen Russell Wilson do it without the best. We've even seen Tom Brady do it without the best offensive line. We've seen countless times where good quarterback play overcomes that. And I think they will keep, they will, I can guarantee you this. They will keep Tyreek Hill or they will keep Travis Kelsey for sure. One of those two guys will stay. I will guarantee you Sammy, that. I mean, you got are you Sammy Watkins not going to return? They've got Miko Hardman for a couple years, but I got yeah, Miko Hardman. I think will step up. I think that's a good breakout candidate that I see. Miko awesome. Hardman is a very good pick, and I think he can take over for Sammy Watkins in the role. I agree, Sammy Watkins will not be there. I believe Demarcus Robinson uh, is, I think, iffy on a contract right now, but I think they can keep they can keep Robinson or Watkins. That's one thing, right? And again, their defense, their defense has got a lot of young guys that I really like, and. What I, happens when they is, can't re-sign a Chris Jones or a Tyron Matthew? Or, I mean, what if they're just left with that huge Frank Clark contract and they're trying to figure it out elsewhere? Like, are they going to? Okay. Look look at the rim. Can you tell me Can you tell me which players are locked up for the long term? And so, tell me. Oh, yes, thank you. They've got Lamar Jackson through 2023 right now. Yep. They have Mark Ingram through right now 2022 with a contingency plan of J.K. Dobbins, who I know you love as an yeah, Ohio State fan. I do, yes. Mm-hmm. They've got mm-hmm. at wide receiver Marquise Brown through 2024, as well yep. as they've got backup plans in Miles Boykin. They've got Willie Sneed for. Can a- you say any of them are number ones? And can you say any of their tight ends can be a number one besides Mark Andrews? Can they, can they can they have a tight end by committee that's very service? Tight ends. They've already proven no. Mark Andrews can do it. They've got I think it's Nick. I don't I don't see it. I don't see Mark Andrews being a Travis Kelsey type guy. I don't see I, him I developing any. He's further. already a top five tight end in the, in the National Football League, and he's played two years. That's I like I said, I'm not I'm okay. Look, they lost Hayden Hurst, not a big loss in my opinion. They've made good moves. Look, the Ravens, I think, are easily the second best team in the AFC. I think when we look at this debate, it's not who who like it's not saying one is good and one is bad. I think these are both very good teams. But that again, the Ravens, it's a it's a very weird collection of veteran guys and young guys, and it's just how can how can you definitively say that they can win the big game? Because that's what matters in the end. I will give you, if Ravens win more than regular season games, sure, go ahead. I don't care. If the Chiefs go 10 and 6 and they win playoff games, I would take that any day. My thing is this. I don't care about the regular season. I really don't. Because these two teams, I think we both know, will make the playoffs for the next five years. They will make. They will at least make it three out of five. I think easy, easy, no doubt. I think we put put all my money in there. I would leave it there, take it. Like, I would, I would bet everything on that. But... When the whole thing is, is, can they do well in the playoffs? Look, Earl Thomas has not been known to step up in the playoffs. He's made countless errors, even for the Seahawks and for the Ravens. He made countless errors. Okay. That is one guy that I do not trust. Okay. Their middle linebackers are nowhere to be found. They're all over the place. Now, I, can you I trust Patrick him. Queen? Can I, can I trust him? You He's don't a rookie. know. I don't know what I'm getting from him. Like you say that you're going to trust the, the way you, when you argue it, you're saying you completely trust Patrick Mahomes and you know the Ravens won't be able to do it in the playoffs. We're arguing which team is best set up for the next uh-huh. few years. While we have to, to do what though? To win Super Bowls. To win Super Bowls. That is what you do. And which that is what is a team. Which team, both coaching and rosters, both set yeah. up to do that in the future? Yes, the Ravens. To do that in the future. The playoffs and the I don't think. And look, truth be told, it's very. If I were to put my money on whether Lamar Jackson will ever win a Super Bowl or not. I would actually say no. Look, it's not I and it's very it's a very bold take, but listen. I'm I he hasn't shown me anything in both regular season or the postseason. And look, how much how much better as a starting He went 14 and 2 as a starting quarterback. What do you mean he's never shown you anything in the regular season? He has not shown me anything being down. I'm telling you. The he's games that he's won, he's never had a hard schedule that Patrick Mahomes has had. Look at his look at his schedule this year. It's insanely easy. It's the easiest one in the entire NFL. You can't blame if him he for doesn't, that. he does not get to choose his schedule. I know that. I'm not. I'm not denying him. I'm just saying, the playoffs. Is he going to play these teams in the playoffs? No, he's not. These are. He's going the playoffs again. It's a whole different ball game. 
I will give you this. I will give you these three points. The Ravens have a better cap situation for the future. They have a better, uh, they are awesome. better at drafting in the, they will be better at drafting in the future. Truth be told, their offensive line will probably be better in the future. Their entire roster, I, top to bottom, their entire roster is better than the Chiefs. And yeah, the I'll even give you that. I'll even give you those four points. That being said, though, the next five years, what, what is every team's goal? When is to win game? the Super Bowl. Exactly. And I don't know what I'm getting from any of these players. I have never seen it. And they have a collection of talented guys, but yet none of them perform when it matters. Chris Jones performed very well in the fourth quarter, disrupted Jimmy G in the Super Bowl. Um, Tyron Matthew, everywhere on the field, I saw him tackling guys, uh, stuffing guys on the run. I saw him covering all over the field. There was actually a clip of him going from one side of the field all the way to the other to make a tackle. He, is, he was everywhere that game, right? Patrick Mahomes down 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter throws an insane pass on third and 15 and Tyree kill who was able to get open on third and 15, yeah. two guys who stepped up, right? Sammy Watkins, that insane catch over Richard Sherman to get them into field goal territory, right? I can name countless guys who stepped up Travis Kelsey with that touchdown catch. There are so many guys that have, that have stepped up for the chiefs and they may not be as talented. They may not be as good. They may not have the best stats. But when it matters most, I know I can trust those guys because I've seen them do it before. Have I seen any of these guys step up when it matters? You cannot base the entire next five years of a team, both of these teams, off of one or two playoff runs. Like I can't. Base I, can't. I, I know I can't. Years. I know I cannot. But, but that's what, what you're I'm doing. Is, you just argued. But, I mean, but the, you're telling but you're telling me that Lamar Jackson will be able to win a Super Bowl in five years. How much I better is Lamar Jackson going to get? Better set I don't, he's going to – look. This season was honestly an anomaly. No one, no one had film on him. No one expected him to do 36 touchdowns. And I think he had an insanely low, inter- I think it's six interceptions. He ran for a thousand, was running loose and wild. Titans figured it out. And guess what? I didn't finish my hunters hunted argument. Look, the Ravens have never been the hunted, right? Now he's, I think he has five or six primetime games. Every team is going after the Ravens. They're marking them on their schedule, right? And you're going to see their weaknesses on primetime. I guarantee you all their big games last year were not really in primetime. The Seahawks game, not in primetime. The Niners game, not in primetime. The only one that was, was against the Patriots. And that's when everyone said, okay, the Ravens are here to stay. But now it's the other way around. Now primetime, everyone's going after them. Everyone's going to shoot for to beat the Ravens, right? That's the team to beat. And now your weak, their weaknesses are going to get exposed like they did in the playoffs, right? Lamar Jackson got completely exposed against the Titans. He underestimated them, and that is completely on him, right? I don't think he's going to underestimate them next time, but now he's going to have a lot more film on him. Teams are going to go after the Ravens. When That's they true. look at the Ravens on their schedule, they're going to mark them up. The Chiefs were already through that last year. I'm telling you, they already – Everyone already marked the Chiefs on their schedule last year. And despite Mahomes getting injured for two weeks, they were still able to go 12-4, and four, right? And when it mattered most, when they had to beat the Chargers, when the Patriots lost to the Dolphins, it was a close game, actually, mind you, right? Their players stepped up. Damian Williams had that insane run. McCole Hardman had a nice return that game. They all stepped up. They know when to step up, and those players are here to stay, right? Some of them may not be. I will concede that. Every team has to let go of some of their good players. It's just how the NFL works, mm-hmm. right? But if you can retain the guys that I think they will retain, I I don't think I I think the Chiefs can easily become a dynasty. It's and but with the Ravens, they haven't won a playoff game yet, dude. Like they haven't shown me anything. But that's not what we're arguing. We're arguing which team is better set up. I will yeah. I will give you the fact that I trust Patrick Mahomes more than I do Lamar Jackson at this time. I trust Andy Reid more. But which team is better set up for the next five years? And it is the Baltimore Ravens with a better roster, a better cap situation, drafting better as a team. They are better. You can, again, you can have the most talented roster. You could have the best cap space in the world, which is what the Browns had had last year. Talent doesn't mean to be best set up is to have those things. And you just gave me that they do. So that's why they're the thing though. Look, but Patrick Mahomes overrides all of that because he's won Super Bowls. Yes, you can. Because look, your whole goal of a team when I look at this question, best set up, it's best set up to win Super Bowls, right? Yeah, that Ravens is are. for teams, for teams like the Chiefs and Ravens, that's what you can definitively go after. For a team like the Redskins or a team like um like even Cincinnati, they're not going like they know, they know they're not set up to win a Super Bowl right now. You could try, you can do anything you want, but you're not gonna win a Super Bowl next year. I'm sorry. Or maybe even five years down the road. Teams team there are teams that know that. The Jacksonville Jaguars know that they are not ready to win now, right? However, the Chiefs and Ravens know that they can win now and they can win in the future. But the thing is, right, one has Super Bowls on their mind. The other one has to still win a playoff game before I, 
before teams can finally look at them and say, wow, okay, this is the team to beat in the AFC. Just because right they now, won a Super Bowl in the last two years or even in a while does not mean that they can't be the most set-up team. They're the best set-up team over the next five years to win Super Bowls. Simple as they that. Can ha- again, talent doesn't mean everything. They can, be the, they can have the most talented roster, right? The Patriots have won su- – uh, out of their six Super Bowls, I can guarantee you – it's actually very ironic – the six times they won versus the three times they lost. The six times they won, they were not the best team. The three times they lost, they were. They were regarded as the unquestionable, most talented, best roster, best quarterback, best everything, and they lost, right? 2007, 16-0, they lost. 2011, they were clearly, I believe they went 14-2. and They were regarded as the best team, no question. Lost to the Giants. 2017, Brady MVP. Team was, no, was running through the AFC, right? The beat Jacksonville, everyone was like, okay, this team is going to win the Super Bowl. They lost to a backup quarterback. It's Again, you can have the most talented roster, right? But at the same time, you're not set up to win a Super Bowl because you don't have the intangibles, right? Intangibles in the NFL matter the most. I think in the NFL, intangible leadership qualities are two things that matter the most by far in this sport than in any other sport because, right, it's a 53-man roster, right? It's 22 players on the field. Yet you need to know when is the moment, you know, to whether throw that, throw that pass down the field or make the right read or, you know, go for the interception or make this tackle on the run or, you know, play the run, disguise coverages. Chiefs have had that experience, right? And without that experience, I cannot definitively say that the Ravens will be the best team in the AFC. Think about it, dude. Teams in the AFC are rising. The Browns are on the rise. The Steelers could be on the rise with Big Ben. We don't know. They're so The Titans are on the rise, right? And we already saw the Titans beat the Ravens. The Colts are on the rise with Phillip Rivers and probably will get a new quarterback, right? The Texans with Deshaun Watson, we never know. Could they Could they make a run? The Bills are on the rise. There's The Dolphins, who knows? With If they put everything uh, together, they could be on the rise. There are so many teams in the AFC that are gunning for that second spot. I think right now it's no question Chiefs are at one, right? And they I don't even have that. the best record. No question Chiefs are at one. Ravens are no question at two, but there are so many teams going up. They're rising to the occasion. And I think now with the Ravens, you're going to see them on primetime really get their weaknesses exposed. And you will see that, hey, despite them having the most talent, because I agree with you, honestly, from top to bottom, the Ravens might have the best roster in the entire NFL. I will give you that. Maybe even for the next five years, they probably will. But I don't think Lamar Jackson will ever have a year as good as this one. I think that, yes, you're right. Talent is not everything, but it's, a lot easier to figure out how to win those playoff games when you have the most talented roster in the NFL and they're all pretty much locked up for three years and then you're able to figure it out. When you're, How come they couldn't do it last year, though? I, you can't just say because they didn't do it last year, they can't for the next five years. What we're arguing is set up. The Ravens, with their roster, cap situation, and coaching staff, is best set up for the next five years. Because the Chiefs, yes, they have – those intangibles, but it's hard when you have to go through an entire season wondering about, oh, who's going to be let go at the end of the year when you have to deal with all that cap space. And they space. see that's the thing with the Chiefs, though. They don't worry about that till they get to the off season and they're partying with the Super Bowl trophy in their hands. That's happened that's, one time. They won one. Two, they win one Super Bowl this last year, and you just believe that for the next five years they're pretty much going to win every Super Bowl. And, and no, they like a, they won't win every Super exactly. Bowl. Exactly, I know that they're best. They're the easy favorite. Easy favorite. And until this is the same thing I said with Tom Brady, right? I have bet against Mahomes so many times, and I have lost all of them. Okay, and again, the thing, the turning point for me with Tom Brady was, I think was 2016. I think the the comeback win against the Falcons was the turning point for me. After that, right, because I didn't watch football back in 03, 01, when he won those three, I didn't really know how it really worked. I knew, I knew, you know, I saw some film, but I didn't know the situation back then. I didn't know if he was really the best team, who was the favorite back then. I mean, none of us could really know that as young NFL fans. But we've seen Tom Brady progress through this this decade of pure dynasty, right? And we look at his Super Bowl wins. I believe, I, I actually... I actually got the Super Bowl score right. It was pretty ironic of the Falcons uh, Pats game, but Falcons were up 28 3, right? And I think everyone read it off. But I think the turning point for me was when Brady came back in that game and fully established himself as I think that was when he established himself as the GOAT when he got his fifth ring. It's a guy that you cannot bet against. And right now, the guy that I can't bet against is Patrick Mahomes. I, I'm sorry. I don't think you can either, Jack. I don't think I anyone know. in the NFL. But I don't think that one player – I don't think that you can go through this entire argument and say that one player or even just a couple players is – That's the guy. thing, though. That's what makes Patrick Mahomes so great is the ability for me to say that the team is better because of that guy. 
That is what makes him so great. It's not all these, you know, bogus numbers or all this insane, you know, 50 touchdown. Per- it's the fact that I can say this. I can say that Patrick Mahomes makes the Chiefs better than the Ravens because of himself. I would give you, I will give you Ravens offensive line. I will give you Ravens, um, I will give you Ravens secondary. I will give you Ravens overall defense. I will give you Ravens talent. I will give you, um, what else did I say? I will give you their cap room. But Patrick Mahomes just himself makes it so much greater that it's like, it's insane to me because people have had film on him and he was still able to do these things. Now teams are going to have film on Lamar Jackson. Are you really going to sit here and say Lamar Jackson is still is going to do the same things he did last year? Are so you really going to – after the, after the Chargers game two years ago in the playoffs, everyone believed Lamar Jackson figured out, right? I mean, even we talked about this preseason that we thought the teams had figured out Lamar Jackson with after the Los Angeles Chargers figured them out, right? You would agree with that, right? I think that's – I will agree with that. To the to an extent though, because no one no one expected Lamar Jackson to be you know this insane MVP though. No exactly. one, but, but after because they thought that he was figured out. They thought that they'd had film on him and they figured out how to do it. And the they the chief the Ravens sorry turned right around and turned him to an MVP. He only had seven games in his belt though. Like that's seven but games. That's, that's not enough. That's see, that's nothing. They were able to to turn him around into an MVP after that horrific playoff game where they thought he was figured out. See, very different because see, very different. That was his first ever playoff game. First ever playoff only game. Only played two then. Like, I don't understand why. What's the difference between playing one and playing two? Why can you make all of these judgments? Off because his- here, listen, let me give you an order. Because look, when Lamar Jackson came in, he was ridden off. Everyone rid him off, right? Fifth quarterback taken in the first round. I think he, like, no one, no one expected Lamar Jackson to continue what he was doing in college. Okay, right? He comes in for the Ravens, right? After Joe Flacco did decent, I think he was starting. I think he had a below average. I, th- I think he was below five hundred when he uh, when he got benched. Lamar Jackson comes in with six out of seven games, and I go, wow, okay, maybe Lamar Jackson could be the best quarterback in this class, right? And I believed in him in the playoff game. I really did. But then I realized, right? And that's and I went against my own theory. Rookie quarterbacks just. Don't, Playoff games, they, it's, again, a different atmosphere. And, and I cannot trust a young quarterback to do that. Patrick Mahomes is the first – there are two – actually, sorry. There are two quarterbacks that have defined – sorry, that have broken this norm of breaking the playoff barrier. Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. Those are the only two, right? B- Big Ben is a very, uh, very weird case. I mean, I'm sure there are other quarterbacks who have won the Super Bowl when they were young. But they had they didn't break the playoff barrier in a game like this that it is today. Only two I can name: Tom Brady when he was young and Patrick Mahomes. Those are the only two that have broken the barrier. That is different, dude. That is that is a different type of quarterback that you can if you can really do this at this age. He's 24 right now, and he has a Super Bowl, an MVP, a Super Bowl MVP, an All Pro selection, two Pro Bowls. <laughs> that's that's I mean, that's that's insane. And Lamar Jackson, yeah, he has the MVP, but I mean, really, like. Lamar Jackson, now there's enough film on him. Patrick Mahomes had a whole year to do what he did. And every team was like, yeah, okay, we figured him out. Did it the same the next year. Lamar Jackson only had seven games. That's nothing. For me, it's 10 10 or more. 10 or more. I think that's a good cutoff. 10 or more is a good enough comparison. Like for Ryan Tannehill, the 10 games that he played was enough to convince me that he has the potential to be a good quarterback for the Titans. And we saw that in the playoff game. I where he beat the Ravens. He threw those touchdowns. And I think I trust Ryan Daniel as my quarterback for the Titans next year. Lamar Jackson has not, like, I cannot say in the next five years that Lamar Jackson will just transform and win these playoff games all of a sudden. That you comes from- It's impossible. No, I'm not. And, and it's honestly, you can't say it's not likely. Okay, look, no, I can say it's not likely, but look, the Ravens could easily win a Super Bowl in the next five years. But I think the Chiefs will win more. And I think they're, they will have, I think if the Chiefs ever match up with the Ravens in a playoff game, I'm taking the Chiefs 100% of the time. I will bet, it, barring injury, of course, I would take the Chiefs every time. And look, the Chiefs and the Ravens have played twice now, right? Who, I think Lamar Jackson has lost a grand total of three times in the regular season. Who were two of those losses to? Kansas City, right? I'm, am I wrong? No. Obviously, one was to, you know, the Browns. But <laughs> it's not an episode of me mentioning them. No, it's definitely but, not. It's, but yeah, like, you know, the Chiefs are the only team to figure him out. And it's not even that. It's not even the defense being able to stop him. It was Patrick Mahomes making enough plays to win them the game. I think that is the first, that is the first time I look at a team and I say, wow, okay, the quarterback really figured it out. 
right? Besides the Patriots and Tom Brady. Patrick Mahomes won that Super Bowl. It wasn't the Niners losing it. And I will say this, I will put 100 times out of 100 times, Patrick Mahomes won that game. With Lamar Jackson and against the Titans, it wasn't the defense that lost in the game. It was Lamar Jackson unable to come back. It was Lamar Jackson not being able to make enough plays to put his team back in it. That is That loss against the Titans is entirely on Lamar Jackson. Entirely. And just like I even put the loss on the Patriots last year on Patrick Mahomes, even though it was an offsides on um, – what was his name? I think it was uh, – I can't remember. Sorry, who was it? D4. D4, right? Yeah. I, I still kind of put it on Patrick Mahomes. I know he didn't get a chance in overtime, but I will put a lot, a playoff loss always on a quarterback. If the, if the Chiefs lost to the Texans this year, I don't care if it was the defense who got destroyed in the first half. I would put that on Patrick Mahomes. I will put every playoff loss for – if you're a star quarterback, I expect you to still make plays despite your defense playing bad. I expect that out of you. I've seen Aaron Rodgers do it in, um, before. I've seen that all of the top five quarterbacks that I have in my list, I've seen them do it before. So if I'm going to put Lamar Jackson in my top five, I, I need more. That's why I'm hesitant to put him above Breeze. I think four is a good spot just because of how electrifying he's been. But I'm telling you, dude, I think teams, I think teams are starting to kind of figure I don't think he's, he's going to repeat what he did last year. That like 36 and six, right? A thousand, almost 1100 rushing yards. I think are you really going to tell me he's going to repeat that. I don't think he needs to. I, I, I think it, it honestly comes down to this. You cannot bet against Patrick Mahomes. And even I, to some extent, cannot bet against Patrick Mahomes. But I believe that Lamar Jackson can get close to that, and you don't. That's what it comes down to. I, I just don't think that you can revolve your entire argument around Patrick Mahomes. When you look at the entire Chiefs' outlook for the next five years, you cannot argue that roster, whole roster-wise, they're better set up for the next five years than the Ravens. And I don't think that you can just say that Patrick Mahomes changes all of that. See, their roster is still young. Again, six out of seven, six players are over 30, right? I think that's I like, that's also, still the also I know they, I know they have, contracts. I know they have to pay a lot of guys. I concede that I will give you that, but that being that's like, a again, deal. that's a huge deal. But how come they've been able to make it work with a bunch of 23 and 24 year olds? How come they've been able to make it work? Because they're good 23 and 24 year olds. The only problem is all of their contracts are coming up right now. Name me, name me. Can you name me? Can you name me all the, all the players that you would say that are good and young that they could not, that are not expendable? I mean, I, I think that Tyree Kill's been doing well. Miko Harmon is doing well. But like the problem with the Chiefs is they have. You, they are able to. It's very ironic because most of the players that are stepping up are are not have not been uh, three, two or three years removed from the league. Like it's very ironic because they've been making it work with players that they've taken from the draft two years ago, and yes, they just threw them in there, and they're wrong. just the doing great. Those players work out is because they have other cornerstone pieces like Mahomes, like the other guys that we've talked about, Tyron. Matthews. That's my point, and they're going to keep the cornerstone pieces necessary. They don't need to keep to. everyone. They're, they all come up in the next two years, and they're going to have to pay everyone. That's and the point. reason they're able to make it work with the other players is because – of the cornerstones, and when you lose a bunch of them, it might crumble. And That's my point, them. though. You're telling me there's no way they're not going to find another cornerstone piece. There's no way. Like they found, they found a Who gem in Tyron right Matthews. Now that's young and has not has yet to prove himself can be a cornerstone piece. No, I. That's the thing, though. They haven't developed most of their cornerstone pieces. Like the Tyron Matthew was not developed. And how are they going to sign people if they can barely re-sign their own players? If they give up players, there's enough room for them to sign them. You, that's how it works. Like, if you give up on players, you can sign cheaper ones. It's, it's just how free agents work. They signed a single works. person this offseason because they didn't have enough money. And that – and the only that's, people they had to pay were Chris This Jones. is This is a very weird example. To, this year was very weird because they didn't need to. The, what did they need to do? They only, they, had, need, they, they, just, they only had Chris Jones and Kendall Fuller, and they couldn't even bring both of those guys back because they already had zero money. Now, that's, this, So that's my point. They didn't need to – all they needed to do was keep their Super Bowl roster and tack this free agency and i think they did and i think they addressed some issues through the draft i think they did that right um like next i'm sure in a couple of years they'll have more issues that they need to address but i trust in the chiefs front office i trust in andy reed i trust in patrick mahomes i trust that they will overcome that and i trust that they will find some cornerstone pieces via the draft i trust they will find some via free agency there are a handful of guys that can easily develop i think mccall Harmon can easily become a sammy watkins type player maybe even better Excuse me. I think um, Frank Clark is there to stay. He's a good cornerstone piece for uh, players in the future. 
Reggie Ragland, uh, I, th- I think he's still there. He should be no, there. I, I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure, but I'd have to look it up. But the, um, but that means they have they have guys. I believe Anthony Hitchens is there. I, I like him. He's a good uh, linebacker. Uh, I think he could become a cornerstone piece there. It's just too hard to tell in the next five years who's going to be the who's going to be that guy. Can you tell me that Earl Thomas is there to stay for the next five years as a cornerstone piece? Clayus Campbell? No, I don't think so. Right? Jimmy Smith? N- not really. Like Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters? Yes. You. I mean, you bring up Jimmy Smith, but like they have they have pieces that are under contract for longer as well as I think more young talent. So I think that over it's, it's funny because not like I can't name a single time where any of those guys have stepped up in big moments. It's, it's yeah, really because they're still young and inexperienced and they're going to get the chance. But Just that's, but the, past, that's the thing though. Travis Kelsey has done that. They're, they're all young. Like all of these players who are young have done it. Chris yeah. Jones, young stepped up. Right. They were given the t- Ravens were given the I chance. They were given the chance twice. I mean, you've got Lamar, you've got Lamar Jackson, Marquise Brown, guys we haven't seen play yet. When Dobbins and Queen, I think that you've seen Humphrey step up, and they've got all these guys. That when has really- Humphrey step? Name me in a. I give you moments when Sammy Watkins, Kelsey with the touchdown catch. I've given you pure examples of when they have. I have not. I cannot see any. Not only that. Like, again, I would make this argument. I think Denzel Ward is better than Marlon Humphrey. I think Joe Hayden is better than Marlon Humphrey right now. There's, like, with the Chief, with the Chiefs, I'm, again, I'm banking on a guy that I can trust. With the Ravens players, you're banking on talent, and you're banking on the fact that you yes, expect they them to step up. up. through talent. Yes, they might not step up, but they've set themselves up in a position where if they do, they're the best set-up team for the next five years. And that's what it means to set yourself up. You get yourself talent and guys that you think can do it. That's what it means to be set up. That, so, look, I think the question, it's a very weird question. I think we can both agree on that. Right. It's a very weird question because it's very broad. Best set up for the, for the future, right? That was the question I think we were both asked. Look, for these two teams, right, the goal is not to make the playoffs. The goal is not to win a playoff game. The goal is to hoist that Lombardi trophy in February. That is their goal, both of these teams. And they have the right, they, they certainly have the right to have that goal in mind. Those two and, you know, maybe the Niners, there are only a handful of teams that can truly say, our goal is to hoist that trophy in February, okay? Right, I'm sure every team has it, but you know who has the realistic chance. I think in the NFL, it's kind of there. And there's always that one team that asserts themselves up, right? That's why it's only a handful of teams that you can truly say. Right. For example, last year was the Ravens who just surged and the Niners who both surged up out of nowhere and said, hey, we're here now. Right. So, look, the Ravens have a lot more what ifs than the Chiefs do. Right. What if Lamar Jackson can't live up to his season last year? What if uh, what if Marlon Humphrey doesn't break out and do even better? What if Marcus Peters goes back to uh, what he was with the Rams? Right. There's what if Patrick Queen is a bust? Like there's there's so many questions that I get with the Ravens versus what I get with the Chiefs. I get a good quarter. I get an insane quarterback who's done it twice. I get a good coach who is very good with offense. I get a good defense who's proved themselves in big games. I get a good tight end. I get good receivers. Even if they lose some, I still have most of my questions answered with the Ravens. I don't know what I'm going to get. I think in those five or six primetime games, I honestly think they could lose three of them. I really do. I think teams will figure them out, right? I think I think teams are going to fight them more. They're going to learn about the Ravens more and more, right? Because last year, no one expected the Ravens to have this good of a defense. No one expected the Ravens to have this good of a roster offensively. No one expected them to run the ball all over like that. But when the Titans had enough time, they had a week to strictly prepare with the Ravens. They had time, right? The Ravens were rested. They underestimated them. And I think the Ravens are even going to do that next year. I think they're just going to look at themselves and say, hey, let's just wait till the Chiefs in the AFC championship. They're going to do that again, and it's going to bite them in the butt again because they're not – there's too many questions, right? I will – I think with this question is – it's this. I will give you that the Ravens have the best roster. They have the best cap space set up for the future. But for Super Bowls, and that's the ultimate goal, right? To win Super Bowls, it's the Chiefs, and it's not remotely close. See, yes, there are what ifs, but there's also two sides to every what if. What if Patrick Queen's a bust, but also what if he's a like a Pro Bowl, All Pro player? There's two sides to each what mm-hmm. if, and that's fair. we have different understandings of what set up means, and so. I just think that it's too hard to tell, and we both have differing opinions. But I will okay. I will end my argument on this one question. If you were to put your, if you were to put your money, like your house on every, like if you were to, like gun to your head, if you had to make a bet right now, who would win more Super Bowls in the next five years, the Chiefs or the Ravens? I'm saying the Ravens, and you're saying the Chiefs, and that's. Are you serious? I'm serious. More Super Bowls in the next five? You would, if yeah. gun to, like you had to make a quick choice right now. Yes. Over the 
over the team that's done it. Yes. What? They put that, themselves that doesn't make sense. That, how? They've put themselves in a position to do that. See, they have higher upside than you. You're falling for the trap. You're falling for the 07 Patriot trap. It's That's not it. The talent does not get you everything. But they've it's put how you come together as a team. And I'm banking on Lamar Jackson to figure it out and be able to win playoffs. You cannot, you cannot argue. The, the Chiefs have less upside than the Ravens. Um, okay, I'll give you that. Yes. Fine. So I'm, I'm banking on the fact that they'll be able to figure it out. And I believe they've put themselves in a position to win more Super Bowls than the Chiefs have. I, and that's the thing. I have not seen enough to say that the Ravens could pass them. All right, I, I'm just banking on the fact that it could happen. So just because it happened, hasn't happened yet does not mean it can't happen over the next five years. But it's kind of obvious we're not going to agree on this. I'd love yeah. to hear – I mean, I, I know we'd love to hear what you guys think down oh, yeah. in the comments. And we're going to do we're gonna do a post about this on Instagram. So if you want to go put your opinion there, we'll see what the public – Please goes, do. I know we disagree, but, you know, maybe if, – if everyone thinks it's the Chiefs, you know, maybe I'm wrong. But right now I'm thinking the Ravens, you're thinking the Chiefs. We'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, please go, if you liked what you listened, rate us on five stars on Apple Podcasts. It'll really help us out. And check out our Instagram and website. They'll both be in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.